Welcome back, y'all. Today we have a pair of history boots, a pair of World War II boots. These are replicas. They were sent to us along with some fun little goodies that we're going to put onto the boots. And I didn't know a lot about the details of the Fossumjäger boots. Now, Fossumjäger were the German paratroopers during World War II. And so if I'm going to learn about these things, I want to go and look at as many originals. And that's why I'm lucky. I've got Fossumjäger by Raleigh Pickering. And this thing is just filled with all types of models and, and sole types and patterns of hobnails and all kinds of cool stuff. So this is what I'm looking for. And so we're gonna take this knowledge and try to go to the shop and replicate that and turn these replicas as close to the originals as we possibly can. So let's go. All right, right off the bat, this is the sole that uh, was on it, and he has these hobnails. Now, I was looking through a lot of these originals, and there were some that had, well, there was one that had hobnails. It actually had a half sole, so it had been redone, the original, and then they had hobnails. I'm not quite certain if these were issued or not. I don't think they were. If some of you history nerds out there, especially in World War II, know, were these ever issued hobnails? drop a comment down and let us know, I'm curious. But it looked like most of them had just nails and wood pegs. So um, let's get going. So for those that don't know what hobnails are, <clears throat> these uh, are basically like cleats. And if you think about it, most of our combat boots nowadays are rubber, you know, big beefy tread on them and give you a lot of traction. But when you've got smooth leather, uh, you don't get a lot of traction on, you know, slippery grass or, or things like that. Yikes. All right, so this is all glue that apparently these had come apart at some point and they had slapped, I don't know, probably super glue in there. And so that's why this is so crispy and hard, but we'll get it apart. So in order to recreate this, we're gonna to have to get a template of the original insole. This one is a no-go. Uh, it's missing all this. And so this one, it seems to be in worse shape than the other one. So hopefully the other one will be able to get out, take a trace of it, flip it over, and since they are the same size shoe. And then the shank, don't worry about it, we'll replace that anyway. So we'll just toss those. All right, so this was the other one. It's a uh, pretty bad shape, but at least I can get a shape off of that and then we can flip it and replicate it. Now, one thing I was curious about on the construction of these shoes was, is it going to have a gimming inside because these are modern produced shoes or is it actually going to have a carved channel? Because uh, prior to really mass producing in the 50s, gimming came around in, in 50s, 60s, around there. But before that, uh, good you want to choose were carved into leather so this is carved and this is what we're gonna have to replicate so this is an antique channeling knife and I don't get to use it very often but it sure comes in handy and it is just the right angle All right, so it carves at an angle and puts a slit in there. 
Now what we'll have to do is we'll have to create a little channel on the outside and that will give us a new carved insole. All right, so for this next part, the welt, I was a little confused on. After looking through all the pictures in the book, I couldn't quite get the details because these things were old. And so for that, I turned to an expert in this field, Steve McColgan. Now, Steve McColgan owns a company called SM Wholesale USA, and he is the leading World War II specialist for Hollywood, and he creates things for museums, reenactment, movies, and all kinds of stuff. You probably have seen his work on movies like The Pacific, Saving Private Ryan, Dunkirk, Fury, Midway, Greyhound, and you've probably seen it on actors like Tom Hanks, Tom Cruise, and Brad Pitt. Now, these shoes did have a storm welt, and a storm welt basically will have a ridge that hugs the side of the boot, and the outsole stitches will be on the outside. Now, this is supposed to give a water, more of a waterproof um, seal around the boot. Now, there's different styles. Now, most of your modern storm welts, here's one that's just a little bit curved. This one is basically kind of like a split reverse, and it flips up and creates a wall, hugs along the side of the boot. But here's the thing that I was confused about and I had to reach out to Steve. Most of your modern day shoes that have a storm welt uh, just have a row of stitches that hold the sole on and this is just literally resting against the side. There's no stitches. But what I saw in those books is that there were stitches. Now, was it a faux stitch? Well, Steve definitely told me they didn't do just faux things back in the day. Everything had a purpose and these were military boots and these were made quality. So the stitches along the wall actually went through that's what held it on and we can't actually use a modern day pre-made welt we actually have to create our own to get it historically accurate takes forever for like the kid from the sandlot forever forever Now this is actually the midsole, but it is a, uh, a little bit thinner piece of sole leather. You had to have these things structured because guys are jumping out of, uh, out of an airplane. It's a lot of pressure on the ankles and the knees and the feet, so you wanted these boots to be pretty sturdy. Just to let y'all know, there was no cork in these. These were made like a traditional old school cowboy boot where that carved insole sits flush onto the midsole or the outsole. So that's why we didn't put cork in them. So 
So this sole is the outsole and it is not stitched on. It was originally held on by wood pegs, which is common in German made shoes and Eastern European shoes uh, and iron nails, which you'll see here in a second. And these pegs will actually swell as they get wet. So if you're in Northern Germany, like, you know, where most of the war was, the water will cause these to swell and really hold the sole on. Now these iron nails that I'm putting in a pattern underneath the ball of the foot, uh, these aren't the exact length. These are a little bit longer. So we're gonna cut these down, make them smooth, but these would actually protect the uh, the sole from wear. Now a lot of the originals were um, rubber and they actually found that the leather was better and lasted longer than the rubber for that time. Who Go figure. So they started switching to leather soles for the second model. So we're putting this hill block, actually we're building this thing up layer by layer. Now this is a very interesting uh, hill. You've probably never seen one like this and I'm not gonna show you right now anyways. But when we're done with it, I'll explain exactly what the purpose of this thing is. Day two, still chugging along. It's a long shoe, but you know, some creative stuff to it, like that heel, I'm not gonna show you yet, but you'll see it. Um, I'm gonna put some hobnails in the bottom of these things like they had when they came in, and then we'll get these things cleaned up, and then we'll show you the reveal. Okay, it's my turn. Uh, you thought I was not gonna be in the video, surprise, here's my cameo. Okay guys, one of the things that I wanna draw attention to real quick is just the white stitches. Now, as you can see here, when we did our research, so many of the boots that were being made for the German troops back then from the manufacturers came with white stitches. I don't know the reason for it, I wasn't able to find that, but what I did notice is that a lot of the later pictures that you could see on troops, the white stitches were, you know, were darkened up over time. Now, that could be for two reasons. One reason is, of course, when you're wearing them out in the field during battle, the white stitches are gonna get dirty. The other reason is the troops, you know, when they were taking care of their boots, oftentimes had black polish, and that black polish it was just a lot easier to just get down in there, darken those stitches without having to be you know, gentle and not darken them up. It would make no sense. 
But for the sake of making this boot look like it came from, straight from the factory for this video, all we're gonna do is put some darker black shoe cream on here, really put this leather back to black like it was originally, and then we should be good to go. Okay guys, we are done with this pair of boots, but before we show you, like always, just a couple of quick reminders. Uh, check us out on both of our websites, potterandsons.com as well as southernpolish.com. Uh, those are our businesses, and guys, the, the money from those is what helps all of this keep going. So definitely check us out. We always appreciate any business you wanna throw our way. Uh, other than that, uh, yeah, Heath, what do we do on this cool pair of German boots? All right, so, this was a this was a really fun one. German Fossum Jaeger paratrooper boots, World War II, and uh, we had to completely. I mean, you saw these things; they they almost look like they could have been original because of the shape that they were in. We had to go from the ground up, build a new insole the way that it would have been done back then, which is a channeled into leather instead of a canvas gimming. Uh, from there, we actually did a storm welt the way it would have been done back then, which was flat and actually through. You can see the stitches on the outside and then flipped up to stitch the midsole on, which was then uh, topped off with very appropriately a German pit tanned sole leather. Uh, I wonder if that tannery was used during the war. Who knows? Yeah, Who knows? Kind of interesting. That one was uh, then held on by wood pegs, uh, iron square nails under the ball of the foot. And then this customer wanted to top them off with some hobnails, which again, I don't think that they were uh, issued with hobnails or the Falsham Jaeger boots with the heel rims. Mm -hmm. But if you do know, or if you've got a, you know, somebody in Germany who's got a granddad who <laughs> was in the Falsham Jaeger, you can ask him and, and let us know, because I'm really curious about how old historical military boots were constructed. Mm -hmm. But uh, we did top those off with the hobnails and then and then we just you know <clears throat> simple polished them up just got them yes. looking just got the uppers the uppers were in good shape so you know just the other polish. thing the hill did you recognize yes. the hill it had that groove we told you we were going to wait for the hill so that here, thing was attention. a beast yeah. to try to get done and done right i'm sure they had a tool that would just like eh, back then and, and grind it into it i had to do that layer by layer and carve it that was actually there's two different uh reasons they say had this one was for snow skis it could mm -hmm. click into the bindings the other one was for some rubber galoshes so that the leather wasn't slick in the airplane there was these rubber galoshes and they would wrap around snap around the back to give them a little bit of grip there's you know information that says both but um again if any yeah. of you guys know let us know we really enjoyed this historic pair of boots. We always enjoy it when we get old historic types of shoes in here. And, and this I, won't be the last This either. will not. We are trying to go a little bit different direction with our channel some. So you're going to enjoy it. Guys, if you enjoyed this, please give us a thumbs up and let us know below. Uh, did you enjoy it? Did you not like it? Did you like how we kind of did this one? We try to mix it up and make this a little more entertaining, something different. And a lot of the uh, requests that you guys have been sending for us, hey, can you do this pair of shoes? Can you do this pair of boots? A lot of that has been on the back burner. Well, now it's on the way. So we're in the process of video and a lot of those. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, if you have not clicked the notification yep. bell, definitely make sure you do that because you are not gonna wanna miss a lot of the videos that are on their way soon. I think that was just about That's it. That's it. All right, guys. Till next time, y'all have a good one. Mm -hmm.